Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a number shaped card. Now I've shown how to do this before, there are old videos on my channel, but somebody asked me several months ago how I made the number seven card that used to be in my image banner on my website and YouTube channel, which has subsequently changed. And then I briefly showed how to do this in a Wednesday night YouTube live. And I was asked by Pat if I would show how to do it in a video so I could take a little bit more time. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So I'm going to show you how to make two cards. First of all, a number seven, and then I'm going to show you how to make it for an 18th card. So where you would have two numbers rather than just a singular number. So I would say straight away, I'm in Canvas Workspace for computer. So the downloadable version come over to the text icon, left click once on the page and I'm just going to type a number seven and hit enter on my keyboard. Now this will, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. This will automatically bring up either the last font that you've used, it will default to a font. And the font that I'm looking to use for this particular project is called Black Rose and it's available from Defont, and you can see the name up here at the top. I'm just going to put the number to one side. So just as a visual guide, if I wanted to make this card fit into a regular UK A6 or a US A2 card, the overall size would need to be about five and a half high by about four. So I'm going to come to the basic shapes and I'm going to just drag on a rectangle. I'm going to come to the editing icon. I'm going to make it 5.5. I'm going to untick maintain aspect ratio and in the height I'm going to make it four. And then I'm just going to rotate it so it's vertical. So this would kind of represent the front of the card. So if I bring this number seven and place it roughly in the top left hand corner of this card. Now what I'm going to do, I've clicked on it and the rectangle's at the front. So I'm going to come to my layers panel. I'm going to find my rectangle and I'm going to lock it. So now it can't be selected. So now I'm going to choose the number seven and I'm going to drag the number seven out until it's, you know, quite big, nearly filling this rectangle. Then I'm going to drag another rectangle onto the mat. I'm going to squash it down. I'm just going to bring this number seven up to the top so it's at the front when I select on it. So now I can position this right at the top of the rectangle which is just my guide and I'm going to bring this one in and I'm going to position it so it overlaps the number seven and fits within this rectangle. So when I click on the number seven and go to the editing box, I can see that this number seven is three and a half inches wide, but my card base is about four inches. So I want to make sure that this rectangle is four inches. Then I'm going to select the number seven and hold my shift key down and select this tiny little rectangle at the bottom. And I'm going to center them horizontally. Now I'm going to come back to the layers panel and I'm going to come to the original rectangle which was only put on the map just to help me with size. I can unlock it, I can select it and hit delete on the keyboard. So I'm just clicking on it here in the layers panel to select it and then hit delete. So now I've just got the two elements left. I'm going to select the number seven, right click and make a duplicate and just put the duplicate off to the side. 
I'm going to select both. I know they're aligned together and I'm going to hit the weld icon. Then I'm just going to bring this down. And the reason I've welded the rectangle onto the bottom is because this font is very curly. And with this curved bottom, this card wouldn't stand up if it was just the number seven on its own. If you want to make your number seven less tall and have more of a box on the bottom, then obviously you can make this rectangle taller and make the number seven shorter in height. But I just want it basically to fill what would be a normal card. So with this now selected, I'm going to right click and create a duplicate. With my duplicate selected, I'm going to, I'm on the edit tab and I'm going to come to flip vertical. Then I'm just going to bring the duplicate down and overlap it until this section and the tip here overlap. And they look as though they're overlapped, so I'm going to select both and I'm going to go to edit, sorry, I'm going to go to align horizontally. So I now know they're all lined up together. And now again, I'm going to go weld. And I can see that they welded together here where there was a very fine overlap. And I can see they've welded here. So this is now your card. So you could put a fold line in here if you want, but I prefer to do it either, you know, just by folding the card or doing it on a scoreboard. This would represent the front of your card. And this is the back of your card. And this number seven is the same size as this here. So you could cut this again in the same color as you cut this, and you could position this just on top, and that way, where this folds, you're going to have a flat line, so you're losing some of the curve in the shape of the card. So you could cut an extra piece and stick that over, and then if you want matting layers with this selected, go to your edit icon, scroll down to the bottom, come to offset. I would take the offset down to 0 0.04 and I would do inward. And I would say, leave the original as it is. I don't want to get rid of it. And I'm going to say, okay. So I've now got a smaller matting layer. So if this was the front layer that was going to go on top of the card, like so, this could be your matting layer. So if I just make this pink in the hope that you can see it, that will sit. I'm just going to zoom in. That would sit then as your matting layer. You could make the matting layer bigger if you wanted you know, bigger than 0 0.04, but that is how I made my number seven shaped card with matting layers. So that's one card, so I'm just going to select everything, right click, and make that a group. And I'm just gonna put that on one side for now. Now, let's say you wanted to make a card that's got two digits, so 10, you know, 18, 21, etc. I'm going to use the same font, so I'm going to come back to the text icon, select it, left click once on the page, and this time I'm going to type 18 and hit enter. And again, I'm just going to drag it out and make it a little bit bigger. Now, again, you've got options. If you want to make it the same size as this, Bring your rectangle on, resize your rectangle. What do we want? We want four inches wide and 5.5 inches high. Or you may want to have your card in this orientation so your join is on the side. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to rotate it back. And obviously you could make it bigger. This rectangle is just a guide. So now you've got your two numbers. And obviously these need to be welded together before you can do anything else. So with them selected, 
and I'm on the edit tab I'm going to come down to the bottom where it says process overlap I'm going to hit the second icon which is divide and you'll now see that each number has got a blue box around it and that means that each number is now able to be selected independently so I'm just going to click one of the numbers in this case I'm going to choose the 8 and using the left directional arrow of the four arrows on your keyboard I'm just going to move this over until it overlaps. Now I'm not too bothered about it having an overlap here because I'm going to make this a top folding card and it will overlap at the top when it's welded. So so long as it overlaps at the bottom then I'm not too fussed and you can you know make it overlap as little or as much as you want. I'm going to select both and weld and that's how the it will look. So again, this is only a guide. I can go back to the layers panel. I can find the shape because it's highlighted here because it's highlighted on the screen and I can lock it. So this cannot be selected now, no matter what I do. So I'm going to come to the number, position it up at the top and I'm and I'm going to drag it out and make it bigger. Now again, you know, if you want more number than box at the bottom, you can drag it down. And then again, I'm just going to bring in another rectangle. I'm going to squash this down, make the width four inches because I know that's the size I want to use. So I can change the width here. I can bring this up and position it over the bottom of the rectangle that's just there as a guide and I can either make this bigger to overlap or I'm going to make it about an inch. I'm going to select the number and I'm going to bring this one down. So I've now got these two overlaps. I'm going to come back to my layers panel, find the base card that's locked, unlock it, select it in the layers panel by clicking it and hitting delete on my keyboard. Now again before I do anything I'm just going to select this number, right click and make a duplicate, drag the duplicate off to the side, select both of these, come to edit and weld. Just going to bring that one down I'm going to right click and make a duplicate, take the duplicate up here and then use flip vertically. Line them up so that they overlap here, select both, choose a line center so they line up centrally and then weld. And again that's now my base card. So you'd have a fold across here, so you'd lose a little bit of the tip on the one and you'd lose a slight amount of the curve on the eight. But you've got this that you can sit over the front of your card once this is folded. So again, with this one selected, I'm on the edit tab. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to the offset and I'm going to choose 0 0.04 inward and leave everything as it is and this is now my smaller layer so I'll just make it I'll make this one blue so this you don't have to cut if you don't want but if you want it to be you know a perfect shape when it's folded whatever color you cut this card cut this in the same or you could do it in an alternative colour, it's entirely up to you. That would sit directly over the front and then you've got your matting layer that will sit inside. And that's how to make a shape card. So here's the number seven. I'm just going to ungroup all that. And here is the 18. So I hope that was helpful. 
please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.